It's seven o'clock, so we should start. And I don't know if there is any. Okay, perfecto. So it's uh, seven o'clock, so we should start um, uh, this this week. The theme, how actually the peptides work, how the peptides in clinical practice are divided and what we can expect from uh, each uh, of the peptides. So, uh, because we had kind of a history, you know, what are the peptides good for and uh, what we can uh, what we can expect uh, on the therapeutic level or uh, why we can expect it or uh, what is the what is the purpose of uh, using the, per, the the peptides uh, in confrontation with uh, standard medications and uh, also um, if somebody can write me if you can uh, because the software was changing quite a bit the uh, the screen I mean the slides so uh, I hope I make it just black and white now so I hope that uh, you will have uh, possibility of uh, seeing all my presentation in a good uh, mm, clarification yeah. oh, so um, Defining neuropeptides, bioactive peptides. Uh, so, uh, in general, what we have uh, uh, seen in the past uh, 10 years, that there are peptides which are therapeutic agents that have been uh, taken from uh, food protein hydrolysates. These are the sport peptides, and basically what I have seen that mainly people, when you mention peptides, uh, people link it to the sports nutrition. And these are the, the uh, uh, facilitators of metabolism, and uh, they stimulate the muscle growth and can heal the intestine, and uh, they are basically on the level uh, of uh, food supplements as or a function of food because basically you take it uh, in a in a kind of shake drinking but it's still the peptides and they work very well we have lots of experience um, of uh, uh, using the uh, sport peptides in uh, oral application and uh, because they are longer chains so uh, they are considered as a as a function of food and it works um, for not only the sport this is very important that it has been presented for the the sport nutrition but lots of people for instance in cachexia after uh, chemotherapy or you know uh, exhaustion polytraumatic uh, syndromes uh, after heavy trauma after heavy operation so uh, the long chain uh, proteins do not absorb and help to the patient that much like uh, short chain um, uh, hydrolysates. Uh, so these are the, the, the peptides in, in its uh, original form. Now we have also, uh, that's what my real way is producing is the blend of short chain peptides, which we will discuss later. Now, the extremely important is, uh, uh, the question of uh, the oral route delivery because um, as you can uh, experience about 60% of all conventional small molecule drug products are administered via oral route because the uh, the oral route is for the for all people the most uh, appropriate and simple so you have also a very comfortable uh, very comfortable approach that you know uh, for many many years or generations there is a, a pill for the, the cure the pill or the capsule for um, for uh, the treatment and there you have um, also uh, the drops so the most uh, from the oral application the most uh, efficient is the oral application under the tongue 
that's almost equal to, uh, in some cases, it's almost equal uh, to um, injection, parenteral application. But uh, the disadvantage is that you may not do uh, uh, blends of peptides with the herbs and minerals and so on. So uh, uh, probably for uh, our clinical experience, the most important part is the, uh, the oral application. Uh, now, uh, the, so, so this peptides in general. Now you have to uh, also understand what are the neuropeptides, because the peptides in general are the, the regulators. Then you have the neuropeptides and neurohormones, and uh, here we go to to application of. Uh, current offer that we have uh, from Mario Way, because the bioactive uh, regulators, which are current product of uh, Mario Way, is uh, stimulating production of neurohormones, which uh, uh, at attach to the G-protein coupled receptors, which was the first, the endorphin, and uh, they, they uh, steer uh, lots of important uh, processes, uh, just as the growth, reproduction, homeostasis, behavior, immunity, stress regulation, and so on. And this is um, very important to understand why we are uh, responsible for uh, neuropeptides on the base of uh, uh, Mario Way products, because you may have... Uh, uh, the products which are uh, like the brain or the memory or the nerves. So they are bioactive peptides that stimulate the neuropeptides, which then affect the nervous system. And uh, they are derived from large precursor molecules. And only then these are converted to neuropeptides of the first generation, which can be then further converted to neuropeptides of the second generation. And this is um, uh, very important to understand that, that there is a cascade of action and that's the reason of this webinar to make you understand that uh, if you take bioactive peptide or bioactive regulator it has the whole cascade on uh, further uh, uh, steps of metabolism and production of uh, the uh, neurohormones and neuropeptides and uh, because neuropeptides are those uh, which are regulating actually the the central nervous system and hormonal system and, and immune system. Now, the advantage is that uh, you never, through the bioactive uh, peptides, you never go to direct influence from chemical drugs, which we have been using for hundreds of years, go and force the cell to do uh, according to the molecule is guiding. Now the peptides and bioactive peptides are much more sophisticated because they indirectly stimulate. That's why you never have um, the problem with um, side effects because you can't achieve uh, thyroid stimulation by um, the thyroid uh, uh, thyroid peptide or parathyroid peptide, which is uh, on the Mario Way offer, and uh, you go indirectly. So basically, you stimulate the uh, brain to produce the thyroid stimulating hormone or parathyroid or calcitonin and so on. And you never supply directly. So this is the huge advantage of the peptides and partially I hope it explains why it can't have the side effects. It may have a toxic effect, but we will speak about it later. Now, here is what I said, because again, we are in the hypothalamus and uh, the pituitary gland, right? And you have uh, the source of production of neurohormones, which are stimulated by peptides. Like uh, when you have an oxytocin, when you have an antidiuretic hormone. Uh, so that's on the basis of the peptides that you are uh, taking uh, 
as a as a food supplement or uh, integratory, which is basically uh, the main purpose of the therapy that you tell to the body through the indirect command uh, what the body should do, but you never force it. So this is the major advantage why uh, why we love to use the peptides because they are not on the side of possible toxic effect. Uh, regarding the, uh, if you can imagine that, it's like uh, the difference between the tennis and squash. So when you take a chemical drug, it's a, it's a tennis because you have your counter player and you play on him to make him the loose, you know, but basically you play on him. In squash, when you want to win, you don't play to your partner player, but you play to the wall so that it hits the other wall and only then it hits the ground so that he's losing. You see, so this is this is very important to understand mechanism of peptides. And I think this sample of tennis and squash to me sounds the most uh, appropriate because uh, you have to think uh, that if you want to influence your uh, liver, you always have to influence first the, the intestine with flat uh, or uh, microflora, and only then it goes to the liver. Or when you want to influence the, the brain, you have to go again through the, uh, through the uh, intestine. So basically this is the mechanism of action of, of, uh, of uh, peptides which are uh, uh, currently available. Now, um, and now we are what what we would call uh, the products of my way, they should be bioactive peptides or bioregulators. That has been uh, this name introduced uh, by the Russian scientist, uh, Professor Havinson. And I think it most uh, uh, mostly represents appropriate uh, function of um, the regulators that we use. And uh, the, the main focus of the action is the preventing disease from the onset. And uh, the onset of disease is that your uh, compensation mechanisms are exhausted. And uh, the minute they are exhausted, starts the clinical manifestation. But you can see from the uh, laboratory tests, if they are appropriately uh, structured, that there is no uh, there is no system which uh, you can see before. Uh, in current medicine, there are not so many tests that would show it before. You know, we may question why is that so, but uh, the laboratory tests that, that can show you a serious health problem like year or year and a half ahead are already available. The question is that they are not uh, clinically applied frequently and vastly. And uh, as I say, we may question why is that, but if you have um, various types of uh, uh, diagnostic tools, you may foresee the problem much earlier than it really is. And uh, uh, the pathologies which can develop in a serious problem, like especially the cardiovascular disease, which is the um, hypertension, so um, antithrombotic accidents, uh, cholesterol, uh, immune system, and so on, then uh, this can be fairly well uh, managed before the actual onset starts and before you have to start to take the chemical medication. Because if you are in the alarm state that the chemical medication uh, is the only help, you know, when you have a heart attack, you can hardly fix it with the, uh, with the peptides but or the stroke. But the question, if it already happened, what shall we do afterwards? We have the emergency treatment, for the first, let's say, two, three, four weeks, and then what to do. And the problem is that people stick to the chemical medication because the doctors do not prescribe them anything else. So the poor patients don't know, and the poor patient cannot understand why should take something else if it's not recommended by the doctor. And um, the symbiosis of uh, chemical medication and uh, bioactive regulators is uh, pretty high. So there have been always uh, very good uh, very good results. Uh, now, um, the 
characteristics are that uh, mm, they have to be uh, small, you know, uh, so they can always penetrate to the cell. Uh, they must have high structure diversity and uh, low toxicity uh, and incidence of tissue aggregation in the body. That's very important part because most of the chemical drugs, they, they uh, accumulate in the body as uh, the metabolic products as well as the uh, toxic products because first, uh, you by every chemical drug you uh, become uh, intoxicated and uh, very few people do disintoxication so we can uh, hardly find somebody of uh, regular chronic disease patients who would do some kind of detoxification it's almost uh, impossible but uh, basically they have uh, uh, the accumulation of the uh, of the toxins and metabolic toxins which cause oxidative stress and that's what we discussed in the last oxidative stress may cause or usually causes emotional stress and you go to the vicious circle that nothing is going to work properly uh, now uh, one of the uh, very rewarding uh, uh, is the mm, diabetes. Uh, so uh, the peptides, uh, especially the product pancreas, you know, they react on the key enzymes such as alpha amylase, alpha glucosase, glucagon, like peptides and dipeptidyl dipeptide. And these enzymes are, you know, found lacking very frequently. Uh, from uh, in most of the patients who are uh, in diabetes. So uh, if you do thorough examination and you understand that by the, the peptide called pancreas, you may increase the ac action of these, uh, of these uh, uh, enzymes. So basically the, the development of diabetes 2 is uh, uh, prevented. So at this stage, uh, you uh, can, by combination, of course, with uh, uh, the intestinal peptide, uh, which is FLATU or uh, microflora, uh, you always uh, achieve a certain level of uh, balance and people can be saved from diabetes. And the mechanism of this peptide is that it, again, indirectly uh, uh, increases the the enzymes of uh, of the pancreas which are extremely important for um, fatty acids uh, degradation and if you have enough fatty acids and you, you have uh, enough uh, base uh, bricks for your hormones so uh, indirect effect is uh, for alzheimer as you know that lots of patients who take long term statins um, have the complication of uh, Alzheimer's disease and that's not uh, actually what uh, we would like to have. Uh, uh, yeah, the, 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 um, um, now uh, what all of the uh, current objection of uh, pharmaceutical companies that why they are not uh, very much keen on using oral peptides uh, is that they have uh, very limited oral bioavailability. Major, major objection was uh, always that uh, the enzymes in your uh, chloric acid in the stomach uh, are so high uh, with acidity one to two, three uh, pH of acidity. Uh, that uh, basically no even short chain peptide uh, is available and uh, because you have only uh, amino acids. Now the effect is that the peptide has to be uh, unmodified, right? Uh, so that he uh, would go to the gastrointestinal tract and remain unmodified and at least uh, 
uh, would have a uh, uh, certain period uh, plasma half-life. And that's uh, the very important aspect which has been always blocking the or limiting uh, vast uh, dif diffusion of uh, oral peptides into uh, preventative medicine and uh, pharma doesn't want to touch it a lot because uh, uh, we have been uh, said we have been always exposed to the objection of any pharmacological uh, company that uh, they do not uh, pass the stomach that's why it's basically impossible to uh, and the objection was you know um, was the size because uh, uh, if it's long it's uh, there is a degradation by by peptidases which are in in the stomach uh, then of course lack of effective methods for delivery because the poor transport properties uh, uh, through the biologic membrane you, as you see there are two types of, of action one through the receptor which was the g coupled receptors or through a biologic membrane and uh, that's why uh, they have been uh, out of the sight from the major pharmaceutical company. And the third objection is the poor uh, target specificity because you cannot guide the peptide specifically to um, any organ which uh, uh, we would like to, which is, you know, a relative truth because uh, with this indirect effect, uh, you don't have to uh, guide the peptide for the liver. You have to guide the peptide for the intestine that will influence the liver, and the liver will influence uh, the heart. So this is this is the key point. Yeah, and um, so the this was, uh, but the the, the research have uh, made a far uh, progress and. Uh, so, so we have uh, several new um, sources of the peptides and uh, uh, in, there has been highly improved the heart life of the peptide and uh, uh, new uh, repertoire of the organs and targets. Now, uh, the dosage is it's very uh, important. Uh, how much should be the dosage? And there are two limitations. Well, one is purely legislative. Uh, because after a certain amount, you cannot uh, register the product as a food supplement, but it has to be as a medication. And we all know what it makes uh, to uh, with the pharma companies, uh, what the hell it makes, you know. So uh, that's why um, we have to look at the, uh, always at the concentration. And now the the what is the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics and uh, th because it's a natural product you know uh, then uh, and all the peptides which we uh, which we use are basically part of us so that's why the concentration and uh, the high level of uh, uh, distribution into the uh, fluids liquid fluids of our body uh, is uh, always uh, uh, a question. Now we have to. The action is, um, uh, as we said, you know, either through the membrane or through the receptor. And uh, the pharmacodynamics is uh, uh, what I very like, very much like. Is pharmacodynamics is uh, what the drug or what the product does with my body. And pharmacokinetics is what my body will do with the drug. So you have to always consider both ways, you know, not only uh, like the chemical uh, companies that, that have uh, um, always in consideration, you know, uh, standard, uh, standard uh, modifications of um, the already approved and patented molecules, but uh, we must uh, think of uh, lots of modifications of the peptide bioregulators because 
uh, we have to improve and that's what we have uh, achieved in 20 years of research. Uh, the pharmacokinetic properties of, of the peptides. It means uh, uh, how the body will uh, react to what we uh, give him. Now, what is the paradigm that you have to understand in peptides is that it's a part of me. So the toxicity is very relative. I mean, you would have to uh, take huge amounts of, of peptides because no body in the world can produce uh, grams of peptides within one hour, for instance. But uh, I think this is valid for all. The overdosage even of the water is dangerous. So uh, you have uh, a relatively uh, small um, zone of danger, which are uh, which uh, you know we would have to eat like uh, 40 capsules in one time of one peptide to have maybe some possible different reaction. But uh, the major problem is that people do not understand that when you ask for the side effects and we say none, uh, that's the major uh, problem which we are facing with the patients. You know, because from all the medications, you are always uh, asking, okay, what is the side effect? What is the side effect? No, there's no side effect. When it's properly uh, dosed, but uh, we don't speak, you know, that if you uh, take six capsules, uh, or eight capsules, something wrong will happen. You know, it would be tens of 50, 60. <clears throat> now, all these techniques, you know, uh, that we have been using is uh, on the amino acid substitution on, or the modification of the peptide terminus, which is either nitrogen or uh, carboxyl, right? And uh, the disulfide bonds, which, which uh, have to be stronger to resist uh, the certain time of passage through the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, now, uh, this is uh, basically the graph that shows uh, what um, what is absorption and what is the distribution. So, and, and elimination, of course. So, um, the pharmacological response uh, is either on the post receptor event or the, the drug which is bound to, to the receptor or going through the me membrane right that's what i was mentioning uh, before what the uh, body does to the drug and what the drug does to the body uh, so uh, Pharmacodynamics in peptide therapy is uh, uh, the dose concentration effect relation to a specific uh, uh, and uh, as you may see that the, the, the pharmacokinetics is uh, much higher than uh, pharmacodynamics. So uh, what does the peptide does with the body is much higher than the body does with the uh, with the uh, drug or with the peptide, because the body cannot react against the peptide because it recognizes as its own. So this is the vast advantage, according to uh, pharmacological uh, and pharma uh, dynamic uh, approach, that the peptide therapy is uh, absolutely safe and uh, does not create uh, the side effects. Uh, in uh, and creates only positive effect you see so uh, that's uh, now it's the question of the uh, absorption um, that the distribution is uh, uh, going through the body fluids and from the body fluids it goes to because how you're gonna this when, when you swallow it it goes from the intestine and from intestine it goes via via uh, blood through the villi um, and it's absorbed through the intestine and it goes to the blood and from blood it, it's distributed to uh, to the organs and uh, then the remaining uh, part is filtered from uh, by kidneys now there is not much remaining from uh, from the peptides because uh, basically we speak about the uh, 
uh, nitrogen uh, derivatives which are from all proteins so but but uh, if you take uh, if you eat one big steak you have much much bigger load on your kidneys than you would have from uh, one month therapy of of peptides now uh, this we discussed yes and, and here you have the, the renal metabolism uh, of the peptide which is uh, the glomerular filtration is uh, either intraluminar or it's tubular reabsorption or peritubular ex extraction so this is basically mechanism of extra uh, eliminating the peptides uh, uh, from uh, from the body, but it uh, doesn't affect too much of the uh, uh, kidney metabolism because we didn't notice in 20 years none, none, no kidney complication. On the contrary to, for instance, diuretics or uh, high protein. Right now, very interesting part uh, which I wanted to mention is the function. It's a, they are so called social peptides. And uh, social peptides, which are the, the peptides or neurochemicals, uh, uh, sex hormones, catecholamines, opiates, they play an important role in regulation of social behavior. This, I think, was unknown to lots of people that uh, we think we react on the basis of our emotions. And here we go to uh, psychoneuroimmunology or psychoneuro endocrinology which uh, luckily is uh, uh, vastly respected in Italy not, not so much in the other countries because it's only neuroimmunology or neuroendocrinology and the psycho is always put away so the Italian society PNEI P -N -E -A -I, is uh, highly uh, on the forefront of understanding uh, the role of emotions in regulating and producing the peptides and uh, there has been so so it's another mechanism of action uh, that you may stimulate the production of certain peptides by uh, meeting uh, an opposite sex so uh, that has been uh, a long time studied and especially again italy has uh, mm, uh, done lots of uh, uh, experiments and one of the major experiments was the level of uh, nonapeptides oxytocin and arginine vasopressin arginine vasopressin is the uh, highly responsible peptide for regulation of social bonding because arginine vasopressin makes the the uh, capillary dilatation uh, when you want to have um, uh, romance or when you want to have sex so capillary perfusion is absolutely uh, essential for uh, this uh, type of uh, activation of, of the peptide now there has been uh, a study that uh, 100 of uh, couples of various types of, of uh, stage of romance or relationship has been tested and uh, the conclusion was that uh, many of um, the long-term relationship had uh, zero or very low levels of uh, oxytocin and arginine vasopressin despite when you are in the early stage of, of uh, uh, romance or uh, so you have a high levels now this we came to the conclusion that the maximum length of uh, love affair or being in love or being in, in the, uh, like Bruce Lipton says, honeymoon effect is 18 months. After 18 months of couple living together, uh, oxytocin and vasopressin go down to normal. But on the other side, when you have these two peptides high, it confirms that um, you are in love without saying. So this was a very nice, and I understand why it has been done in Italy because nobody would care about the so romance affairs like, like Italians. But especially, I think it's the 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 question of uh, the uh, Professor Botticelli and his commitment to the psychoneuroimmunology. 
that he was proving to um, uh, the uh, efficacy of uh, emotions in uh, regulating uh, mechanisms. Now, this is also an, an extremely uh, interesting that oxytocin and arginine vasopressin are ne also neurotransmitters. So one peptide, the function of peptide is as a neuropeptide and neurotransmitter. And it depends very much where it has been synthesized. So they are always in hypothalamus. But if it's a paraventricle and supraoptic nucleus of hypothalamus, it's a, a neurotransmitter. But if it's uh, in the pituitary gland on the periphery, it's a neurohormone. Now, you can understand the uh, enormous uh, importance of uh, pituitary gland uh, for uh, the treatment of psychoneuroimmunological disorders, uh, and especially the epiphysis uh, product to regulate this harmony. Uh, because on the mechanism of showing that if you are in a, a bad mood or bad relationship, you may prescribe epiphysis as antidepressant. You know, it, it's amazing because when when you uh, when you read this, you know that if uh, if it's uh, so the aggression is a neurotransmitter, so you are going to paraventricle supraoptic nucleus of, of epiphysis. So uh, these people who are always jealous or uh, fighting or frustrated or syndrome of victim, so they they synthesize in the epiphysis oxytocin and and vasopressin in uh, in this part of. Meanwhile, those who are calm, who are more in parasympathetic as a neurohormone, who are ready to be uh, for a good relationship. Uh, then it's released in the peripheral of pituitary gland. And this is important, especially for pregnancy. So uh, when lots of people cannot uh, have the child, there's always uh, both in tango. But uh, for women, uh, the epiphysis is extremely, uh, of course, with uh, the, the uh, woman and uh, uh, the hormonal, uh, but it, you always have to add the epiphysis, the, which is extremely important. And you see why? Because the mechanism is where epiphysis will decide to synthesize what type of neurotransmitter or neurohormone. So um, this I made uh, as an interesting part of mechanism of action of, of peptides, that it depends what your brain will produce on the basis of the stimulation. And here we go again what I said, the, the difference between the tennis and the squash. Because classical medicine will overload you with the hormones, thinking that the hormones will uh, make the pregnancy possible. But as we know, the success rate is uh, hardly uh, no more than 60%. And uh, despite it's good, but you know, the consequences are disasters because lots of women get uh, uh, psychologically seriously changed. So this was uh, on my, uh, you know, commitment to um, uh, peptides, the function, how they function on the basis of uh, our emotions. And um, there has been uh, two authors, you know, Dewsbury and Williams, uh, that have studied that oxytocin and uh, arginine vasopressin play essential role in a pair bond formation. So uh, this goes again to psychoneuroimmunology that um, when you have a couple therapy, when you go to a psychologist or when you go to mediator, and both will uh, receive the peptides for, uh, you know, increasing oxytocin and vasopressin, which means the, the epiphysis. So the therapy will be much more successful. From this point of view, I think um, the importance of uh, peptides is enormous, you know. So uh, my opinion is that uh, when you would combine and the peptide therapy with psychotherapy, that's um, absolutely 
uh, advantages, especially when you want to have uh, um, a child or set up uh, as a base for the family. Uh, now, uh, for the, um, the the efficacy of uh, of biomodulators uh, is very wide and. Um, my real way is basically covering most of the indications that uh, normal life is is uh, bringing. Yes. So um, when we spoke about the the memory process uh, or the emotion, uh, like the grooming, stretching, yawning, yawning is important for especially the women uh, and uh, the sexual and reward behavior, aging and nerve regeneration thermal regulation, all this can cardiovascular and what we said, you know, sensitivity to seizure, or we can uh, link to cardiovascular uh, to, to the peptides. Now, now and neuropeptides are especially um, responsible for neuropathies and memory disturbances, as well as schizophrenia. For the reason that I have explained uh, in my previous uh, slide that uh, it uh, highly influences the uh, uh, pituitary gland. Uh, now, uh, when we have immunological peptides, again we go. So we go from the psycho neuroimmunology. So we discuss the neurological, we discuss the psychological, and now we go to immunological. Now, the Immunomodulatory peptides uh, are proven that they function on uh, macrophages, NK cells, T and B lymphocytes, and CD4 and CD8. Now, the mechanisms of actions uh, uh, mainly affects the macrophages activation. Macrophages are very important in all defensive mechanism, and they produce Microphage by itself produces uh, lots of uh, uh, peptides. So if you stimulate the microphage uh, with um, the um, product uh, spleen, I don't know if it's already on the market, or with the product immune. So the mechanism of action is that it stimulates the microphages to produce lots of your own uh, uh, immunopeptides. So that's. Uh, the basic uh, key to understand in the long term uh, uh, therapies, which are which have to be minimum uh, three three months, right? Because consider that two weeks it takes before the indirect effect of the peptides on the on the cells, on the neuron cells, and on the neuro production of the hormones is uh, basically coming to. Uh, to the level of uh, uh, stable change in the production that the uh, microphages get uh, uh, production of their own uh, own peptides. Now, the, the the leukocytes can go up in the cases of uh, immunodeficiency. Uh, increased production of neutrophils, immunoglobulins, and cytokines. Um, spleen, uh, I, I hope soon will be the, the peptide for the spleen, and uh, mm, and K-cell stimulation. So this is uh, what we have uh, for the function. Now, regarding um, the the capsules. The very important part of uh, the uh, My Real Way is the, the unique capsule. We discussed it several times, uh, but uh, there has been done the study of the um, Russian company Capsugel, which uh, has proven that uh, the destruction of the Capsugel uh, is approximately 45 minutes 
later than the release of a conventional capsule, which takes about five minutes. There's a, this company has uh, developed this capsule for very important uh, peptide uh, long-term release or slow-term release because it has to resi resist the whole passage from the stomach to the yeunum and to the intestine where it can be uh, uh, disintegrated as, as uh, we are here that uh, it has been reported uh, in the intestine was a complete release now uh, and 20 minutes it takes after the start so um, uh, these special capsules are uh, responsible for uh, highly reduced uh, um, probability of the decomposition of the content of the nutrients compared to standard capsules. Now here you can see hopefully the study that uh, there has been done uh, the radio labeled uh, um, uh, lactose monohydrate uh, and the capsule had 290 milligrams of uh, cold lactose monohydrate. So the 10 milligrams of uh, radiation through the ultrasound has shown the passage, as you can see the dot here. So there, there was a complete passage of the, um, of the uh, capsule through the whole stomach. And as you can see, um, after Mm, 50 minutes it's still there and only after uh, 45 uh, I mean 100 minutes it's completely decomposed so it can resist almost an hour from uh, from the uh, from swallowing the capsule uh, which you may see that it's on the edge of the stomach when it actually leaves the stomach and when it leaves the stomach in the intestine you see the complete uh, disintegration but it's as you, i don't know if it's visible but it's 105 minutes so it's almost 90 minutes i mean uh, one and a half hour more than one and a half hour before it uh, completely disintegrates so i think this is the probably the greatest achievement which we have uh, uh, which we have currently on the market so uh, as far as I know, there is no other company that has been using this type of capsules. Uh, there are other products, you know, which use different shields, but none of them has been so well documented like this one. So I think this, this uh, is great achievement of Mario Way to, to have this type of capsules because uh, that will uh, completely uh, explain the efficacy of uh, the Mario way against the competition. Of course, the question is that um, the the best application of the peptide is in injection, but uh, uh, injection application is uh, currently having a very few uh, possibilities because you are limited either to the nurse or to the medical doctor. Uh, it's difficult on the travel scheme because you know uh, if you are going to the a certain office or you have a certain nurse that eventually comes to when you travel uh, you must be really a uh, uh, highly trained patient to apply the injections intramuscular injections to yourself which i don't say is not impossible but uh, the um, advantage of the capsules is uh, for every normal patient uh, much much higher and uh, I think that this is, uh, so far, this is the best uh, solution with the best uh, uh, situation at the moment of the um, current market, because uh, this capsule I didn't notice in any other uh, product. Now, let me have...
I don't know how far this one is visible, it's also black and white, uh, but um, yes, so basically we covered all the themes uh, which, which I wanted to cover on the mechanism. And um, if you have any questions, we have 10 minutes left to, to discuss uh, what was not clear or what uh, you would like to uh, uh, get more information and you, you would like to have uh, uh, deepen the uh, position of uh, uh, the doctor or the therapist or whoever uh, is prescribing. Of course, uh, this is um, quite complicated, you know, for the patient itself, despite my way has a, uh, has a very good uh, sight, but uh, I doubt that uh, this uh, safety and efficacy can be explained on the side so that every patient will understand that he can do it himself and he can do it without any major problems. And uh, what we would suggest that uh, uh, all those who are either uh, therapists or medical doctors or uh, diet dietitians can uh, give an advice to the patient uh, or to client because those who are not sick are not the patients yet, but we have to consider them as, as our clients to give them advice how to how to proceed you know, with the applications because that's what we discussed before it's always combination of uh, two usually two sometimes three types of of uh, peptides and uh, when it's uh, getting to the pathologic state or onset of disease uh, you must uh, prescribe usually uh, six capsules in the morning, six for the lunch and six for the evening, or minimum six and six morning, evening, which can be uh, for somebody to take it for three months, uh, highly demanding. So I would suggest all of you to uh, who are prescribing that to try it uh, so that you understand what the patient has to has to reflect for the uh three months uh, of the therapy sometimes six months you know? and of course uh, what we did with the uh, different food supplements that when you have the capsules too many you just open them and uh, get it as a powder which in this case it's impossible because as i have explained to you you must have the capsule that will leave the passage all the way to the intestine so basically, uh, we are limited on uh, on uh, the performance of uh, the um, on the performance of the capsule. Okay, so if you don't have any questions, I think that's uh, uh, for the moment fine. And uh, if you uh, will remain in uh, attention then we can have uh, in, in a week or so uh, or two weeks another webinar which would be about the combinations of uh, the most important uh, uh, disease uh, or lethal uh, disease which are the cardiovascular and as you may know that uh, despite uh, all the attempts of uh, low cholesterol and uh, uh, low uh, 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 toxic uh, uh, food and so on. Still, the people die in 69% of the death in Europe is from cardiovascular disease. And uh, probably 90% of the population has a hypertension, you know. So, uh, if you take it with the inflammation, then uh, it's done and it explains how and why uh, the death rate is so high okay so looking forward to meet you you had a great presentations and uh, i will uh, be with you like i said in a week or two okay have a nice evening enjoy and 
Good night.